It's the most exciting night at the movies this summer. Very intense. I'm still shaking. I've never seen anything like this. Experience the abyss. Next up, Russ and I review the highly anticipated 4K release of The Abyss. It's disconcerting for a filmmaker to have a film hyped before the fact. Welcome back to 4K Kings. My name is Matt. I am Russ. How are you guys doing? And welcome to your home of physical media. And if you're new here, take a look at our back catalog. We've got lots of movie reviews, 4K comparisons, blue news, top five lists, and more. A lot more than that. Such as James Cameron. If you like James Cameron, this will be about, what, our 10th James Cameron video? Year of James Cameron. Well, Matt, allow me to take a second to uh, ask the people watching, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. Gary Busey promised us that if we hit 6,000 subscribers, he's going to quit cross-dressing. Do I look like I need a psychological evaluation? But Russ, today we're here finally to give the people what they want. Got to give them what they need. Oh. We're here to talk about this. There she is. The Abyss, which I received this way after I was supposed to get it. But now we have it in hand. We have seen this film. I had already seen it prior. Russ? This was a first time viewing for me. I had avoided this film for close to 30 years now. So first time viewing for you. It's a childhood favorite of mine. This is 30 years in the making coming to physical media finally on 4K. And one of the most sought after, clamored for releases of our time. It's 1989 film, hard to believe, directed by James Cameron about a civilian diving team enlisted to search for a lost nuclear submarine and faces danger while encountering an alien aquatic species. The Abyss is an interesting mixture, sometimes an uneasy mixture, but usually a fairly well-functioning mixture of emotion, character, dread, anxiety of being trapped, claustrophobic, people having to work together to survive, tension within the group. Cameron had directed Terminator, then Aliens, and then The Abyss. This film starred Ed Harris, Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, Michael Bean, and Chris Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he I forgot he was in it. I had never seen it. I'm like, yes, yeah. cabin boy. This could uh, get pretty ugly. At the time the movie came out, reviews were mostly positive, which praised the stunning visual effects. It grossed $90 million on a $50 million budget, and it hit number two in its opening weekend. Do you know what it was behind? It was 89. 89. I'm going to guess either Batman or Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Parenthood. Oh, shit. Well, spoiler alert, Matt. I did enjoy The Abyss more than Parenthood. Not the movie, just raising children. Just actually raising children? Yeah, I'm not a fan. But what's your general feeling on The Abyss now that you've seen it for the first time? It's mid-tier Cameron for me, but Cameron is very, very good at making blockbuster films. Mm -hmm. So me saying that isn't exactly an insult. I'm just saying I would not rank this film uh, at my age on a first time viewing. I would not put this anywhere near Aliens, Terminator, or Terminator 2. I enjoyed The Abyss much more than True Lies. Great. That's kind of where I thought you might land on The Abyss. And I hadn't seen The Abyss in a really long time. Yeah. I haven't seen it in at least 15 years. And like before that, it was when I was much younger. And I will say something sort of dawned on me watching this this time. I think this movie is a kid's movie. It's not like you'd call the film end to end an, an action film. It has a sense of wonder to it as these divers are operating in this in this environment that people hadn't seen before. Nobody had even seen anybody talk underwater before. It had never been done. All James Cameron movies are kids' movies at the end of the day. You think so? I don't it, think it, aliens terms, is. No, 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 no. In terms of what you're saying, they're adventure, they're simple, they're one, two, three, you know, they're basic. And as someone who watched it for the first time, who has seen Aliens his whole life, it's so hard not to compare this to Aliens. In Aliens, I don't know if it was the cast or the script, but I bought that ragtag group. I agree. There is genuine chemistry in that group in Aliens, and that's what makes that part of the reason why that film soars. 
I don't know if it's the cast in this movie. I don't know if it was written to make every one of them just a walking archetype. Here's the cowboy guy. Here's the geeky guy with the rat. It's very cartoonish. After the abyss, he made the ultimate kids movie with Terminator 2. Mm -hmm. He's always been on that direction. And then a couple years later, he topped the world again with his remake of Fern Gully. Towards the end, I felt like it wasn't going for a kid's movie. Well, that's There's what... about three endings in this movie. Let's get that out of the way. By the third ending, I felt like he was going for something more Kubrickian. I still can appreciate what this movie is, what's being done, the execution of it. As we always say, he's great with execution. The main cast, too, I also feel is very, very strong. I mean, Ed Harris is the anchor of this movie. I don't know how you felt about his performance. I know you're an Ed Harris fan. I think he's great in this movie, but I think the movie limits him. I feel like his acting in this film is superior to what the product is. I don't think this movie required him to go to 100. And I think he was going to 100 a lot. <laughs> He's here to fight. He's here to fight. He's here to fight. He's here to fight. Fight. Fight! 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 I feel like he fits this part perfectly. No, nah, he is. He's he's easily, easily the best actor, best performer in this film. Again, if we're going to call it a kid's movie, I can't really blame Mary Elizabeth uh, Winstead for what she does in this film. I can't blame Russian Michael Bean for having two lines of dialogue and letting the mustache do all the work. Dude, his mustache. Hold on. Let's get back to Mary Elizabeth really quick. It's like such a trope, but they, they reference her and call her a bitch like five times. And I never once was like, yeah, I see what they mean. Oh, hi, Lindsay. Like, they never really show why they all feel like she's such a bitch. Yeah. I noticed that, too. Dude, they kept I calling noticed, her a bitch. And it was funny because it's like she's fully capable from the start. She's likable. She's yeah. not mean to anybody. It was weird that, oh, it's Lindsay again. God damn it. I'm like, she's the nicest person here. She seemed very friendly. I guess mild spoilers. There's a plot point where Ed Harris has to resuscitate Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio. I feel like in general, that concept, that idea where she's going to like drown herself and hope he can bring her back. I think that's pretty heavy. But then like the execution of it, it never has bothered me, but it stuck with me, your interpretation of it, which maybe spoiled it for me this time around. That scene that you're referencing, that I'm referencing, that I adore, fight, fight, it is so on the nose, so hard on its sleeve. It is just so overwrought, so overly dramatic and soap opera ish but you're right it fucking works i love it it's james cameron he does this shit for some reason it works yeah but i can still have a laugh at it dude it's fucking but, but come on by the, like the 12th time he says fight i'm chuckling well it's executed really well where it's like oh they're just gonna give up on her now and i'm like oh shit is she really dead like wow but then you know they go back at it again and there's more hitting and there's more fighting and then she's uh, getting called listen. a bitch again god damn you bitch you never backed away from anything in your life now fight listen if this was any other filmmaker <laughs> maybe it would have some dramatic tension but this is james cameron as we said his movies are by the numbers i didn't for one second believe they were going to kill the bitch <laughs> <laughs> It's so soap opera and sentimental, but dude, you know why it works? Because Cameron's not cynical about it. Cameron's thinking this is heavy, dramatic shit. It is. To him, yeah, but to, to me. me. To me. No, to me, it's like after school special levels of drama, you know, but I can't hate it because it's so earnest. And he does that all the time, and he's great at it. Apparently, that scene was a bitch to film. And like they did. Because Mary Elizabeth Mastrano was there. Well, she. <laughs> obviously they're like wet cold her tops off like everything and like i guess they had to keep redoing certain things or things were going right she basically left some of those final fights you're talking about ed harris was talking to no one we are we're doing it and everything is just going incredibly well and we can feel it we hear mikhail solomon say out of film the camera ran out and she heard that and she just like freaked there was a lot of tension uh on the set but but you know that's natural for that that type of scene and i think that that energy is is in the scene you see it there wasn't an urgency to this There's one not. as much as there is to his other films you're you're right the no this i feel like starts and stops a lot the muddy endings <laughs> doesn't help it definitely feels like there's some length to it that cameron is enjoying 
spending time there. He's not taking his time to get there, but at the same time, like you said, there are many, like many climaxes to all these different yeah. plot points that are going on. So it does kind of feel like at some points, like, oh, this movie still got more to say. So there is a little bit of a length to it. It does feel like a little bit of a longer film, but if you buy into what's going on, I don't ever feel bored and I'm excited to see what's going on, but you could kind of see some areas where they could trim maybe a little bit more to tighten it up. Like you said, give it more urgency. Watching it now for the first time, I I see so many just typical James Cameron tropes in this movie, the mm -hmm. water, the flooding. To me, it was almost like a, co a combination of aliens and Titanic. Let's not forget about Michael Bean. Yeah, I told you I was a wake and bake guy for 40 years right. or whatever, you know, and I, I I had a blast. I had a great time, especially doing the underwater stuff. First of all, Michael Bean kicks ass in this movie. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue, but his presence is felt. That mustache is unreal. What the frig happened to Michael Bean? Why did he fall off the face of the earth pretty much after Tombstone in terms of like being in real prominent movies? He's so good. I was going to defend him for a second. And then I remember I met him at a convention. Oh, what happened? It was awkward. Dude, was it really? I met him. Now that I think about it, he was the most like this character when I met him. Just like kind of quiet and looking to overthrow this place with a nuke. Eh, he had a gun behind his back <laughs> waiting for me to walk away. I, it was weird. I hope you're doing okay, Michael Bean. Well, Russ, I will say, at the time, audiences did enjoy it. I don't remember this being a huge hit, but I was seven years old, so I could be off. Was it? The Abyss was far from my most successful film. It barely broke even. It became more of a success, more of a kind of a cult success after the fact, when people realized that there was this sort of beating heart of a story there between these two characters. It's a great love story. And it's a great love story between two people that were married and separated. So Terminator had a $6 million budget and it grossed 75 million. Aliens, $18 million budget and it grossed 180. The Abyss, 50 million budget and grossed 90. And then Terminator 2, 100 million budget and grossed That's 500 million. James Cameron would return to the Abyss in 1993 and released his special edition of this film, which restored about 30 minutes of additional footage and completed visual effects on scenes that never made the cut originally. One, the studios didn't want it to be a nearly three hour long film. And two, the technology and different, you know, um, capabilities that they had at the time for CGI weren't up to par. So sort of had to change the movie's direction almost entirely by cutting out this 30 minutes. It got put back out on the abyss special edition dvd which i have here i've seen so many people comment that that special edition version that he put out makes the movie so much more well-rounded and that the one that i'm watching you know doesn't even make sense and all this kind of stuff i'm going to defend it right now i still feel like that is a complete movie that i watched i feel like the other added stuff makes it a lot more heavy-handed and long but you know you like the abyss you want to like it's just not the one that um i like uh yeah okay I could see some of the little nitpicks I have being ironed out by a director's cut, but I'm with you. I think the original was already a little too long, so I'm in no hurry to see those issues ironed out. And it seems like to me that this movie was almost like maybe, I don't know, maybe a passion project, maybe something that doesn't elevate to the same level of Terminator, Terminator 2, or Aliens. It's not it, It's not elevated to that yeah. height. I mean, the scale of this movie is huge. It's incredible to look at what the, the lengths they went through to film this thing is unreal. Yeah. Underwater for like 50% of the time. There are half the cast on here don't even want to reference the Abyss anymore. Ed Harris and Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio don't even talk about it in interviews anymore. Some, some crew members and different people were like likening it to being in Vietnam. I think I came out of the Abyss with a, with a sense of my my own limitations and a sense of, of the limitations that you could reasonably expect other people to, to push themselves to in the making of a film. And I think we, you know, we, I may have lost a little perspective on that movie and, and pushed beyond what it, what it should be, but you know, that's the nature of filmmaking. James Cameron himself almost drowned making it. Like this was, damn, yeah. Like a lot of crap went on making this movie. It's very creative. It's very indulgent. It's a really cool movie within his catalog, but it's not upper tier. It feels more like a passion project to me. I feel like every damn thing he does is a passion project. Yeah. You tell me Avatar is not a passion project. Titanic wasn't yeah. a passion project. Yeah, he's he likes to play. He does. That, like I say, that's why he works. He's so passionate about being basic in terms of story and character. What his real passion is, is investigating the bottom of the ocean. You know what? Don't worry about it.
I love this, motherfucker. You better love this. I'm going to make the Titanic the most accurate. I'm going to build another fucking Titanic, you know? I'm going to recreate everything so it's fucking pitch perfect. Why? Because I'm making a movie. Well, I'll tell you what, this is probably the last movie where the studio could fuck with him. In terms of like telling him what his vision's going to be, yes. the theatrical version is not what his vision he wanted it to be. And it's a completely different tone of a film. Like, no one's telling him what to do now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's talk about this physical media of the abyss. Now that we've gotten our, our thoughts out, I've worn my heart on my sleeve for the abyss, which I still think is a great film. And I love in James Cameron's catalog. If you want to see where I ranked it, go check that video out. Now a proper Blu-ray 4K release is here, and I'm just trying to really figure out how to get this label off so it doesn't leave that white shit behind, pissing I me off. I gave up on that. I just leave them all now. Yeah, and this was rumored for like decades until it wasn't until even like last year, I think that James Cameron or 2022 that he even mentioned like, hey, I'm, I'm working on this thing. Completed the transfer, all the mastery's done. I think it, I think it drops pretty soon. Like, you know, in a couple months, something like that. Not able to be seen in the UK because of the trauma that was caused to that mouse or that, that rat. mouse's family had great lawyers. We've talked about this before. Breathe that liquid. It's a true thing. It's a real liquid. The rat breathed it to demonstrate how it worked, lived. You know, man, the UK censors really pissed me off on this one. The rat read the script agreed to do it, believed in Cameron's vision, and now that brilliant performance will never be seen in Europe. Come on, breathe, baby. God damn it, breathe. Fight, God damn it! Fight! 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 Everyone was hoping that this one wouldn't be botched, similar to Ter Terminator 2, and that True Lies has also gotten a lot of mixed reviews. I've seen a lot of this is unwatchable. I've seen a lot of people praise it. I've seen it basically go all over the place. And I was going into this with really an open mind and an open heart. The last thing I've seen is this DVD. So I'm like ready to see something that is at least an upgrade from that. In terms of it being an upgrade, it certainly is. It's like crystal clear. It looks like, you know, day one, brand new. Like everything is, the detail is there. The clarity is there. It's very vibrant in terms of colors. It's a very dark movie to begin with, but what they, like the blacks get a lot blacker, obviously. So things, there's a little bit more of that enclosed feeling, a little bit more depth. What I will say is some of the comments made, and this was gonna be, you know, whether or not you do or don't like it, I guess, because I see this is like the hill people wanna die on, is, is it scrubbed? Is there grain? What does it, you know, as far as it like waxy looking, all that kind of stuff. I never felt like anything was waxy at all, but there is pretty much no grain to speak of. It looks just very clear and clean. There might be a few moments where you can tell some grain is there. And as far as any time it looked dated was when the aliens would appear um, and some of like the lighting effects and different things that were going on. You could kind of see some of that, like, I don't know what you call it, like compositing, like around some of the effects. Clearly that's not really there or that was a green screen. Mm -hmm. Those were really the only moments where I was, I could tell the age on it. Other than that, it looked like a brand new film. All the under water stuff is so like beautiful to look at so i don't know what what people want don't want with their abyss again i watched this thing and really wholeheartedly really enjoyed what i saw i can't decide where i stand on that hill you mentioned not in terms of the scrubbing and, and the the dnr effects but more so with ai in general remastering older films mm -hmm. basically priming us and getting us ready for inevitably a future with no actors yeah <laughs> with all computer generated performances it, i can't decide where i stand on this hill because i really i i truly see it both ways in a lot of circumstances when let's say i don't know paramount or someone puts a 4k out right they're putting out the 4k and you don't know who did what with it you have no idea but a lot of times movies especially including these ones where the director himself or herself has come back to do the master right and you're coming to it from a place of at the time i made the abyss no. This is what I could do for the abyss. No. Now with what I have available to me, I can make it look the way no. that I want it to. No. Your perspective is it no. should remain how it was originally yes. seen for the very first time. 100%. Yes. 100%. I don't care if it's the same filmmaker. You are not the same person you are 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Should Paul McCartney go back and re-record Beatles songs? Because at the time, you know, there was no fucking trap beats. Yes.
that's just content mm -hmm. at that point. That's just you're constantly upgrading and moving content. That's not a statement. That's not a definitive piece of art. Things move today that way. Of course, the future, it's going to keep moving faster that way. Sorry, it didn't move that way in 1989 with the abyss. Do you think it gets muddy where like the abyss, like train spotting is an example. I never saw that in the theater, never saw the abyss in the theater. All I know is the VHS I have now criterion puts it out and it all of a sudden everyone's pissed because it's not what they remember watching through their VHS or whatever else. Does it get muddy at that point? If you just want to go in there and be like, okay, this is what it looked like on the film. Since it looked like V since it looked completely different on VHS, let me try to remaster it to look how it looked on film yeah when i shot it yes yes i'm all for that i don't know what other people are lambasting for me i'm lambasting it because i think it's a testing ground that last indiana jones movie was a testing ground for the de-aging stuff hmm. and to us we're oh wow you made harrison ford look younger what we're they're really doing is normalizing cgi performances they're getting us ready to accept it because in 10 years it won't matter if harrison ford's dead or alive we can remake raiders and make them look exactly like he did there god damn it i just don't want to see them altered like i want them to be historical art artifacts as well as entertainment if i watch pulp fiction i want it to feel like 1994 not 2024 while also having the best presentation possible let's wrap this up yeah i'm starting to feel like that bitch mary elizabeth mastriano it's not easy being a cast iron bitch it takes discipline and years of training Regardless, it's a good day that we now have James Cameron in 4K. Terminator's got to be next. That was our review of The Abyss. We'll have a review of Aliens coming up soon as well, and then we'll try to wrap up all this James Cameron love fest. This release isn't going to please everyone. I personally enjoyed it. It's also a film that I love. It's a small, quaint film in James Cameron's catalog, I feel like. Quaint film. Nice and quaint. <laughs> um, this is James Cameron's indie romance drama. I would recommend this to anyone, including <laughs> the family, except for some brief Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio nudity. You're going to be just fine. And listen, if you disagree, fight me. <laughs> I just ended on what you said. <laughs>